Hello everybody and welcome to Gene's Reviews. Reviews from a regular dude. Where I do movie reviews, trailer reactions, I react to YouTube videos, and I review YouTube channels. And I do whatever the hell I want. I now have some merchandise for sale on Teespring. So if you'd like to support the channel, please check it out in the description below. Thank you and enjoy the video. Hello everybody. How many of you have found some really disturbing videos on YouTube? I know I have, but um, today we're going to take a look at five disturbing videos that just disappeared from YouTube. This is from the channel called Top 5. Not Top 5 Unknown, just Top 5. So let's check this one out right now. Some of these do go way too far, I think. Since 2005, YouTube has evolved from a little-known video streaming website to a Google-owned media giant, taking over the internet and changing society at large. However, like most massive sectors yeah, of the World Wide Web, him. YouTube has seen its share of controversies, conspiracies, and channels that have made us turn our heads and perform double I takes that one. as their content sparks unsettling vibes. Some of these channels break the rules, others display explicit content, and some may be nothing more than a prank full of spam. Regardless, there have been a fair share of controversial, sometimes confusing channels that on closer inspection leave the viewer with an uneasy feeling. So here are five mysterious channels that disappeared from YouTube. Hit those lights, sit back, and enjoy. Mr. Peeper. This first channel is one of the creepiest and spine chilling ever one. uncovered on YouTube. The channel in question was called Mr. Peeper and featured a series of videos taken from a first person style vantage point. That included stalking a couple of young women and playing unbelievably horrible pranks on them. The first woman was recorded through her living room window, watching TV and totally unaware of the videotaping outside. Mr. Peeper then enters her home after she goes to bed, and while in the entryway, he records his reflection very briefly, revealing a scary Halloween-style mask. He then goes outside and rings the doorbell, to which the woman finds a burning stuffed animal sitting ablaze on her patio. Well, okay, I, the question I have is can't YouTube find out who has that YouTube channel and have that son of a bitch arrested? That's peeping Tom. I mean, that's creepy shit, man. He should just, he should be arrested. He should go to jail. Honestly. And I think they could find out who has that email address that's linked to that YouTube channel. <sighs> and not only that, but when he first uploaded the video, they should catch that within a... It shouldn't take too long. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of videos that get uploaded to YouTube every day. But there has to be some way that they could monitor that stuff a little bit better. She frantically calls someone on the phone. Mr. Peeper jumps out from behind a chair, causing the woman to scream. And then the video ends. In between the two separate sequences, Mr. Peeper posted an unsettling clip of him driving through vague countryside, with what sounds like another person struggling in the back, possibly gagged or with their mouth taped. With the second woman, Mr. Peeper follows her into a library and plays tricks with the lights while she searches for books. After a few minutes of teasing, he then follows her back to her house, where he hides underneath the deck and attempts to film up the woman's skirt. This then transitions to another terrifying wow, prank, this guy's a sick where Mr. Bastard. Peeper sticks a needle halfway into the wood and then hides it under leaves, only to record the woman walking out barefoot the next day and stabbing herself unexpectedly. It only gets worse, however, when on a different night, Mr. Peeper attempted to break into her house, but is foiled by a guard dog keeping watch outside. He doesn't give in though, and goes to a grocery store and tapes himself buying rat poison and dog food, which he combines and puts outside near the woman's house. His last video ends with the guard dog finding the poisoned food and beginning to eat it. As you can imagine, both of these situations are quite grim, disgusting, and incredibly scary happenings. Some viewers claim the videos were fake and part of an art project or filmmaking web series, 
pointing to the supposed acting of the second woman when she talks on the phone and steps on the needle. Others highlight Mr. Peeper's expert editing tricks and distorted voiceovers being simple production value, in addition to the dramatic music playing over certain jump scare moments. However, it is possible that these special effects were included as a sick way to maximize the already creepy nature of the stalking tapes. All of the actions are very plausible and the authenticity of following women home isn't a far-fetched claim. One publication on the internet claims that Mr. Peeper is just the name of the channel and the videos are actually recovered films from an SD card taped to the roof of an abandoned car out in the woods found oh, by a random shit. person and then uploaded onto the internet. Now why anyone would ever post such disturbing images without a call for action is beyond comprehension, but it would certainly add another creepy twist to the already crazy circumstances. Eventually the videos were downloaded and re-uploaded by a third party account called Pacemaker Studios, but the Mr. Peeper channel was removed by YouTube due to Good. multiple and severe violations of YouTube's policy on nudity or sexual content. And while there was never any grotesque or blatant nudity on screen, it was more of the insinuation of what was happening behind the scenes that probably prompted YouTube to take action. Regardless, let's hope YouTube didn't stop there and inform the government about the channel, getting the proper authorities to investigate the legitimacy of Mr. Peeper. Toy Free. Well, I hope that none of that's true. I hope it's just fake. But even if it is, he's sick to make videos like that, even if it's not real. That's my opinion. And I hope it's not real because if it is, he poisoned a dog. A couple of years back, YouTube enforced a purge of hundreds upon hundreds of channels that exploited children through disturbing images and potentially harmful situations. One of these channels was the hugely popular Toy Freaks channel. Toy Freaks started in 2015 by single father Greg Chisholm, who had gained a small following in years prior with a lawn care platform and a side channel posting family videos. He started noticing that some of the videos he posted of him and his two girls gained more views than others, and after deeper analysis, discovered with the right titles, tags and actual content, he could profit off of his silly videos. Unfortunately, these silly videos turned into bizarre, so gross skits between him children. and his daughters. These videos ranged from eating weird foods that stimulated vomiting, creepy performances by Chisholm in scary Halloween masks and makeup, dangerous stunts, and even physical discomfort. For example, one video displayed a recording of one of the girls Child using abuse. a baby tooth, spewing blood as she cried and shouted. While Greg always argued his daughters gave their consent for such strange and sickening actions, it certainly stimulated too young to unsettling give emotions by quite a few viewers and eventually YouTube brass. Despite the intense subject matter, Toy Freaks was actually a very popular channel. At one point, it was in the top 100 most viewed YouTube channels of all time, and gained over 8.5 million subscribers in two years. Market analytics calculated Greg had made over $13 million in revenue from advertisements alone, which introduces a question of morals and profiting off your children, let alone children acting yeah. out gross performances. In the end, this is what prompted YouTube officials to delete Toy Freaks as they cracked down on similar content creators. However, one must consider more than what we saw in the small videos uploaded by Greg. The costumes and creepy characters they created were more than just Halloween tricks, and the type of persuasion that might have been needed to encourage two young minds to allow such dark tombfoolery has to be questioned. Meet Sleep See, a channel like that makes millions and millions of dollars through ad revenue and everything, and there's so many more better channels than something like that and they they get nothing nothing at all it's just it's not right where's his audience coming from i wouldn't watch that channel on march the 28th 2014 one of youtube's strangest mysteries came to light when the channel titled meet sleep joined the youtube streaming website popularly known as just meet Meat Sleep went on to post 91 times in brain-bending fashion, using harsh editing techniques, uncomfortable audio sequences, and involving content bordering on explicit. Embedded within these strange videos were secret codes that could be cracked by serious and imaginative viewers by paying attention to words, sounds, and images frequently used. 
While none of it led to an ultimate hidden secret or buried treasure, it stumped many audience members and forced conspiracy theorists' minds to run crazy. The channel wasn't all fun coding cracking, however. A lot of bizarre, unsettling videos made users believe the film was shot by a possible serial killer, potentially a cannibal to boot. Some of the content revolved around themes of kidnapping and stalking, and the point of view from which the shots were portrayed seemed to suggest the person behind the camera was following someone, or at least up to no good. While none of these proclamations proved true, it sparked heavy debate and acquisitions as angry and disgusted viewers started analysing the videos for the actual locations of the houses and started harassing those who lived there. The madness came to an end in January of 2016 when Meat Sleep deleted their entire catalogue and uploaded one last video titled No More. They explained that the entire project was curated by eight individuals across Japan, Germany, Estonia, Netherlands, the United States, Canada, Australia, and Brazil. The videos were produced with professional equipment, and the creators could no longer live threatened lives for a simple YouTube puzzle. Thus, the entire operation ceased, and Meat Sleep wasn't heard from again. As of today, the channel is completely void of content, however you can find most of Meat Sleep's content on third-party mm. websites or loyalist YouTube channels. Meat Sleep will probably never be heard from again, so let's hope that whatever damage was directly caused was minimal, and there were no actual victims of the criminal accusations. Well, I don't think that channel meant any harm. I don't know. Shea St. John. This next channel wasn't so much a mystery as it was completely fascinating, with a bit of conspiracy theory history associated with its creator. The channel in question was Elastic Spastic Plastic Fantastic featuring the character of Shea St. John. St. John first made contact with the internet through a live journal blog in 2003, and was portrayed as a female human badly scarred from a near-fatal car accident. However, instead of prosthetic limbs, St. John used bits and pieces of mannequin parts to complete her damaged figure. She claimed her face was so badly ruined that it was too grotesque to show, thus always wearing masks, wigs, and facial disguises during videos. So, while her formation was quite unsettling, St. John always had pleasant motives behind the creepy costume. The genius behind the production was Eric Fournier. Eric had gained fame in the 1990s as a member of a couple of punk rock bands, The Blood Farmers and Skelligore. It was during these years as a musician that the idea for Shea St. John came to be, when Eric incepted his first project with the St. John character titled Stumpwater Salad. After many years of filming this and other clips of the St. John Chronicles, Eric saw- To me, that just looks like a really weird performance art project. That's all that looks like to me. I've seen some pretty weird stuff like that. There's people that like that kind of thing. I'm not one of them, but that's just performance art to me. I'd step to YouTube and release 30 of his videos on a DVD called The Trigger Compilations in 2006. Eric edited and produced all of the content, just as he had with his YouTube channel. Unfortunately, Eric passed away from internal bleeding complications due to his alcoholism. He was only 42 at the time of his death, but did leave behind a fascinating case of content creation. It's interesting to think about the inspirations for Shea St. John. While some may argue it was nothing more than a unique imagination, all of us use subconscious emotions in the stories we tell and St. John was a physically scarred figure, and may have been a representation of hidden emotional or mental scars the creator faced himself. One intriguing theory that did arise before he died was that Eric Fournier was actually behind the Max Headroom incident, which we discussed in length on Top 5's before. While it was never confirmed, there does seem to be many similarities between the Max Headroom and Shea St. John, Probably such as the, the camera person, techniques, yeah. lighting in certain videos, use of masks and disguises, and the overall understanding of video production. It's a stretch, but certainly not impossible. The channel was discontinued by YouTube in 2017, along with Eric's personal website, but you can still check out Shea St. John recordings on a variety of YouTube channels. Mark Judge. The calamity and chaos that was the Supreme Court nomination of Brett Kavanaugh dominated American news circuits last month. 
But what seemed to sneak through the major media outlets was the creepiness and despicable YouTube presence of Mark Judge, a good friend of Brett and major piece of his this, testimony. What's this? I don't know about Judge this. was repeatedly accused of having witnessed the alleged sexual misconduct by Brett against Dr. Christine Ford, laughing and provoking further damage during the incident. While Judge vehemently denied such proclamations, more outside sources claimed Judge had been abusing women for decades dating all the way back to his time at Georgetown Prep. These sources say they also witnessed misconduct acted out by Judge, normally involving intoxicated females at big parties. While Judge never accepted any of the charges and ran into hiding around the time of the testimony, other devoted internet users and social activists discovered Judge held many secrets and disturbing practices found via his YouTube channel. Posted all over Judge's official account were short films and random video clips of young women wearing little clothing, including conspiratorial messages and titles full of innuendos. To protect those involved, we will not show the videos, but the alarming content is pretty telling of Judge's true character. Mm. What makes the ordeal all the more unsettling is the girls in the YouTube videos are positioned and in a state of mind exactly like the girls from former accusations. A lot of them are passed out and seemingly under the influence of something, or at least pretending to be. Before an official investigation could be launched, Judge quickly deleted the YouTube channel, but clips still exist well, via Twitter and it. other third-party sites. Ultimately, Mark Judge's videos are more disturbing and saddening than mysterious, but the fact that it no longer exists makes you question the validity of his supposed innocence. Maybe one day we'll get an explanation into the purpose of the channel. There may be an innocent explanation. However, after viewing the content, there are few who will believe that. Sounds to me like just another one of those rich pricks that think they can do pretty much anything they want and get away with it. They never really said, though, did he do any prison time or did he go to jail or anything like that? I don't know. Those five disturbing channels that disappeared from YouTube from top fives. How about a joke? The other day I decided to change my Google password and I typed in my penis. The screen popped up with a message that said, sorry, password not long enough. I tell you, I, I get no respect, no respect, no respect at all. Thank you everybody. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hashtag Mean Gene, all that fun stuff. And I now have a Teespring account. So if you'd like to buy some merchandise to help support my channel, I'll have the link to my account, my Teespring, down in the description. If not, that's fine too. But I just thought I'd mention it because I did have some people ask for it. And I want to give a big thanks to Entertainment Fanatic Reviews. That's a channel you should check out if you haven't already. S. Leon there is my first customer. He actually bought one of my t-shirts the very first day that I put it up. So, S. Lee, thank you. You're awesome. And uh, I will see you next time.